Okay, welcome back to Natural Language Processing. The next segment is going to be about semantics. It's one of the most important areas in natural language processing and it ties nicely with logic and philosophy and knowledge representation. So semantics is about meaning and it can be defined not just for language, but it can also be defined for many different things. For example, for arithmetic expressions. So if I give you this expression, five past two times four past three, and I ask you, what is the meaning of this? Well, it's fairly straightforward. You can say, well, five past two is seven, four past three is seven, seven times seven is 49. Therefore, the meaning of this expression is 49. So we can build this by building a parse tree of the sentence, or in this case, the arithmetic expression. We have uh, five and two as numbers. Uh, they can be converted to expressions. Then we can have functors like plus, so we can combine uh, nouns and functors into more uh, encompassing expressions, again, expressions and functors, recursively until we get the top level E, uh, the value of the expression, which is equal to 49. So this is nice, and we were able to compute this 49 just by applying some recursive principles to the original expression. However, what if we had a uh, variable or an unknown value somewhere in this expression. So for example, five plus two times four plus z. Well, what would be the answer here? Well, in this case, we can start with the same parse tree and we have now a z instead of a three in the lower right-hand corner. And in this case, what we can see is that the value at the top level is not a number, but it is some sort of procedure that lets you compute the value of this uh, node. So it's a multiplication of two numbers, each of which is the sum of two numbers. The first one being five and two, the second one adding four and z. Even though we don't know the exact value at the top level here, we can say that it can be obtained by using this procedure once we know the value of z. So in a sense, we have converted this expression into a procedure that can compute its semantics recursively. So let's look at the different example uh, using natural language text, specifically an English language sentence. So we have something like, every human is mortal. How can we define the meaning of this sentence? So representing meaning is one of the most important aspects of semantics, and we want to be able to capture the meaning of linguistic utterances using some sort of formal notation. So what does it mean to have meaning? Well, linguistic meaning can be very different from what is known as pragmatic meaning. So if I say it is 8 p.m., I just mean that uh, it is now 8 o'clock in the evening. So that is the linguistic meaning. But the sentence can also have a different pragmatic meaning. It may mean something like it is 8 p.m., which means that it is time to leave. I can point you to my watch and say uh, it's 8 p.m., and I really mean uh, let's go. So in semantic analysis, we want to assign each of the words some sort of a meaning and then combine the meanings of the words to form the meaning of phrases and then, uh, by extension, entire sentences. So ultimately, we want to be able to convert a sentence like, I bought a book, into something like this. There exists objects X and Y, where X is an instance of a buying event, and this buying event has two arguments, a buyer and a bought item. The buyer is the same as the speaker, or I. The bought item is Y, and Y is a book. So this would be a legitimate first order logic representation of this sentence. So we're going to get to first order logic in the next few slides. Okay, so another representation of the same sentence may be something like this, where we have a record that consists of a predicate buying, and then two attribute value pairs for its arguments. A buyer, who is the speaker of the sentence, and a bought item that is the book. Let's now introduce two important concepts in semantics and semantic analysis, uh, which we will use later on. One is called entailment, and the second one is called presupposition. So what is entailment? Entailment is when one fact follows from one another. So for example, if I say that all cats have whiskers and Martin is a cat, that means that we can entail the statement Martin has whiskers. So the fact Martin has whiskers is entailed from the other two. Another example is, if I know that Martin has whiskers and a tail, uh, that entails the fact Martin has whiskers. So we can drop a tail and still have a valid statement. Now let's look at presupposition. So presupposition uh, can be better explained with an example. If I say the queen of utopia is dead, that means that we presuppose that utopia has a queen. Otherwise, the sentence doesn't make any sense. 
So now is a good point uh, to introduce one of the NACLO problems from 2010 that describes entailment and presupposition in more detail. So this uh, problem was written by Aleka Blackwell and it's available on the NACLO website. So let me show you the problem now. So the first uh, part of the problem introduces the concepts of uh, entailment and presupposition. So uh, the bottom part gives you examples of entailment and then on the next slide we have examples of presupposition. So for example, for presupposition if I say I regret not seeing Sean White's gold medal run, that presupposes that Sean White had a gold medal run, otherwise it doesn't make sense. Okay, so then the questions are, uh, for any given pair of sentences, it is possible that you have entailment and presupposition, or none of the above, or just one. So the question is asking you to give examples of pairs of sentences where in A, A neither entails nor presupposes sentence B. The second question is to come up with example of sentences where A entails and presupposes B. The third example and the fourth example ask you for cases where either you have preposition but not entailment or the other way around. So let's take about examples of those sentences and then you will get to see the answers on the next slide. So again, pulled from the NACLO website, we have the examples of each of those four combinations of entailment and presupposition. You can go through them and uh, understand why they were selected. On the first page we have none of the above and both, and on the second slide we have just one or just the other one. Okay, so now this concludes this introductory segment on semantics.